Black box logging is an incredibly useful tool for dialing in your tune, but as loop times have gone up, it's become more and more of a challenge to deal with the amount of data that a log takes up. A data flash chip integrated into the flight controller is fast enough to log even very, very uh, fast loop times, but it takes so long to download the logs uh, that it really isn't worth it. A large data flash chip can take 30 or 40 minutes to download, and if you're trying to do an active tuning session, that's just uh, not acceptable. Using an external open log device is the next best thing. That uses an SD card, and you can easily remove that, and it's incredibly fast to download those logs, but it's bottlenecked by the serial port connection between it and the flight controller and so you can only log about one kilohertz loop times with it. So the answer to all of that and you're seeing it on more uh, flight controllers coming up is uh, integrating an SD card that's directly connected to the SPI bus and that SD card can log at very high rates and you remove the SD card and you don't have to go with the, the slow downlink times. If you don't have a flight controller that has one of those built in, you do have some options. I happen to, I use the uh, the Mini Revo uh, flight controller uh, and, and this will work with the full size Revo as, as well if you, you do some changes. Um, this is not just micro sized, um, but importantly for this purpose, um, they took the integrated RF radio out and broke out all of the pins to what they call the Oplink airport. What this basically is, is a dedicated SPI port, it's SPI3 on this board, uh, with an additional GPIO. So we can plug our SD card into here and just recompile the firmware and pretend that we have a built-in SD card and uh, we can get away with that on, on this board. With a full-size Revo, um, you can do the same thing uh, if you either desolder the RF chip uh, on the underside and solder directly to those pins or uh, hopefully if you have one of the uh, the newer ones that don't don't have that RF board populated the pins will just be available for you to, to solder to. Of course if you're doing this we still need an SD adapter and you probably are swimming in these and this is the simplest cheapest quickest way uh, to get this working because all you need to do is solder a pigtail onto the back and that is everything you need um, to get an SD card uh, hooked up to your flight controller. Um, you probably can't see it very well, but under this epoxy blob is a little uh, 150 milliamp 3.3 volt linear regulator um, because the, uh, the air port on here uh, only feeds 5 volt and of course the uh, SD card must have 3.3 volts to, um, to work. Um, so I'm regulating the 5 volts from the port down to 3 volts and feeding that into the card. Um, and you can look up the pinups, pinouts uh, for these online and it's just a matter of wiring them to the correct pin on the port. This uh, works really well. Uh, it's not the uh, most ideal situation. It doesn't have uh, proper uh, filtering on the, the little regulator and uh, decoupling. Uh, SD cards actually pull quite a bit of power when they're in the middle of writes, um, and so this does cause some issues. This will work most of the time, um, but occasionally I did find that um, it would corrupt the SD card and you would lose the logs. Um, it might be because the, the lead is, is very long, but um, I didn't have problems uh, once I made a proper board later. Now, of course, we can do one step nicer uh, and make our own PCB. And again, there's very little to this. It's just an SD adapter uh, with the same linear regulator in there. And now we have the proper filter and decoupling capacitors uh, per the data sheet for this regulator. Um, and then, of course, a connector on the end. Um, because I'm doing my own, I can specify I want an actual latching SD uh, slot, none of that uh, push-push nonsense that uh, ejects cards out um, into the grass and uh, is just a pain. So this is really, really simple to put together, simple to uh, build, 
and uh, we have kind of a lot of options that I've, I've put on here. I have, you can obviously see the uh, wings on here and on my own uh, board that I'm actually flying. You see, I've cut those off and I'm just using the bare minimum uh, and this just gets, uh, you know, put underneath the, uh, the Velcro, Velcro strap. I still have a long lead on this because this is the one for uh, that I'm using when I'm actively tuning, not just uh, passively logging. Uh, and so having the extra uh, length lets me easily get it off the, the quad and because and, I'm having to pull the SD card out um, after, you know, every flight um, to look at the log. Um, but you can do that and you've got a flat bottom uh, that you can tape that if you want or velcro strap or zip tie with the holes you can screw those uh down to something or you can zip tie them you have kind of a lot of options on that um you can also um i put two holes underneath uh where my pico blade connector goes and if you're not interested in using the connectors you can of course uh direct solder uh, your leads to that and those holes give you a place to provide some strain relief so you can run a zip tie through that and have something because this uh, you know board is going to be moved around a lot um, you know if you don't uh, strain relieve those uh, connectors they'll just tear out and, and fail after not very long and so that'll give you a very robust connection and this is going to stand up to some abuse without damaging those little uh, micro connectors and of course I just make these using uh, JST pigtails uh, that I get online and it just plugs directly into the airport. Very easy to remove, uh, you can just unplug it uh, when you're not using it just like you would with an open log, um, but it's also small enough this is really easy to, uh, you know, you could cut those wires very short and just leave it tucked into your quad and, and log constantly uh, and just pull them back, uh, pull the logs off uh, only if you need to do some troubleshooting for instance. And just a closer look at the board layout for the uh, the PCB. Nothing um, particularly uh, crazy here. Just a uh, the layout um, uh, pad setup for the SD card slot that we pull from the data sheet, um, with uh, ground pads to hold it down, and then uh, we're using a, a big uh, ground plane on the bottom layer, um, which uh, is punched through to via with vias. Um, on the ground pad. Uh, the Pico blade connector sits here and I have slightly widened pads uh, in my footprint uh, to make it easier to hand solder um, with the data lines uh, going to their respective sections. A uh, 5 volt line comes across a uh, ceramic capacitor here for uh, input filtering. Uh, our little linear five volt, uh, 3 volt regulator um, gets the input side on there and feeds across another uh, ceramic capacitor as its output filtering. Uh, my power rails I have uh, as large as I could squeeze in there uh, and then the uh, the data rails I think I left it 8 mil, 8 or 10, 10 mil tracks just because. Um, and then here you can see I snuck two little vias underneath and those are the cutouts for the uh, the zip tie now the other trick to make this work is we have to make sure that the flight control firmware that we're using knows that we have the SD card available. The Revo target doesn't normally come with an SD card so it's not compiled to support out of the box so you may have to add that yourself if it's not already in whatever branch you're working out of. Um, I'm personally using uh, KC-10 Kevin's race flight branch for his uh, copter control next generation F4 uh, board. Um, his uh, pinouts are set up the same as the Revo, so his uh, firmware is just directly compatible with the other one once I change the uh, target output. Um, so I just have a branch of his, uh, I'm still using the uh, Race Flight RC12 uh, version of that. And all you have to do is modify in the target, uh, the Revo target uh, dot H. Um, I have uh, just a comment here, the, uh, the airport pinout is just uh, ground 5 volts. Uh, PD2 is the uh, single GPIO. Uh, PA15 is the SPI3 chip select. 
um, which we can treat as a GPIO, and uh, PC10, PC11, and or PC12 and PC11 uh, are pins five, six, and seven, uh, and those are the clock, uh, MOSI, and MISO uh, data pins. So we need to set use SD, uh, define use SD card uh, so that we have it, tell it that we are using SPI3 as our SPI instance. Uh, I'm not using any of the uh, SD card uh, detect, pin detect uh, stuff, so we leave that commented out. Uh, define PA15 as our chip select pin, uh, and then down at the bottom for the SPI3 uh, device configuration, make sure that we have a PB3 for uh, its chips, chip select uh, we don't really care about, um, but PC10 for clock, PC11 for MISO, and PC12 for MOSI. Uh, the final thing that you'll have to modify is also the make file, normally also because the Revo doesn't normally have the SD card, it won't show up, uh, have the correct includes uh, set up for it. Um, so all we have to do is find SD card targets here at the top, and I added, I'm using the OpenPilot bootloader to, to do mine, so I just added Revo and Revo OpenPilot bootloader to the SD card targets. Um, and then you have to find the Revo uh, section down here, Revo source, and make sure that we have uh, both the asynchronous FAT uh, file system drivers and the SD card drivers themselves added to our includes here. Basically, we just want to copy what the Copter Control um, uh, board there has because it has the same configuration. Once you've got that, then you can do a new build erase flight and it will work with um, the SD card just uh, as if it had been built in uh, originally.